Hey everyone, welcome to The Hot Slice. This is the pizza podcast by Pizza Today Magazine. I am your host, Denise Greer, Executive Editor at Pizza Today, and I am with Editor-in-Chief Jeremy White. Hey Denise, good morning. Good morning. So we are recording this way ahead of schedule. We are like, oh, we pat ourselves on the back a little bit. <laughs> We're way ahead. So we are going to talk about some things that are kind of in the recent past, but it's cool because you're still going to get a lot of tips out of it. This this is true. Um, I think we both, in the excitement of speaking to our guest, forgot that this would uh, air after the Super Bowl and not the not before the Super Bowl <laughs> to ask about um, her upcoming plans for Super Bowl, which is this Sunday, two days from now. But this podcast won't be out until three or four weeks after next. Now, yeah. So, you know, yeah. Hey, that that's on us. We are yeah, um, no we are perfect ninety nine point nine percent of the time, and then every once in a while, there's just a little little hang up. That's all. But I think it's still fun <laughs> to understand yeah. like what happens at pizzerias on those big days because we've all had mm-hmm. big days, and especially you know we're recording this the day after National Pizza Day, so we know people yeah. are tired for National Pizza Day, and then you have Pizza Friday, and then you have Crazy Saturday, and then you have Super Bowl Sunday. So this yeah. is a time where. I feel like now when this airs in a week and a half, uh, people are going to be kind of settling down from like some crazy days. So, yeah. uh, so it will be nice to to get them in the flow. Yeah, uh, I think every right. pizzeria owner's feet hurt after this weekend. <laughs> lower back, yeah. you know, all the aches and pains. Yeah, before we get into our guests, don't forget. Yeah. Pizza Expo is coming up really soon. We're now like a month oh. out of Pizza Expo. So it's going to yeah. be exciting. Um, so make sure if you're coming to Pizza Expo, get that plan, you know, make sure you get the app when it becomes available. I think I think they talked March 1st uh, is when you want to be able to download that um, and just uh, get get ready to be excited for a huge show. Register now if you haven't already to attend the event at pizzaexpo.com. Absolutely. There you go. All right. So who is our guest today? Because she's amazing. I love her. You know, I love her. I, lo- I love chatting with her as well. We're talking with Sherry Basili of Basili's Pizza of Claire in Claire, Michigan. Um, this small Midwestern town, 3,000 so residents. Right in the middle of the state for you guys Smack that know uh, in the Michigan. Middle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> nice and cold up there, I'm sure. But um, so this fa- family-owned business, Sherry's in-laws, started the business in 1973 so they are celebrating their 50th anniversary in 2023 there are four stores throughout michigan um sherry and her husband only own this one store in claire the other three stores are owned by family members so it is truly a family family endeavor um and you know neither of us had met sherry before denise sherry Mm -hmm. sent an email into me introducing yeah. herself. We chatted a little bit. She's really excited about the upcoming 50th anniversary, who wouldn't be. And when I found out her pizzeria was turning 50, I said, well, Sherry, you've got to sit on the podcast and talk yeah. with, with Denise and I. And she was, she was very excited to do so. And then, um, so we, we met her, we met her cold turkey today for the first time yeah. ever recording the podcast. And I think we both fell in love with her. She just enthusiastic, excited about her, her pizza business and yeah. turning 50 and just lots of good things going on in Absolutely. For, for her pizzeria. And she's super knowledgeable. Like mm-hmm. she gave so many tips for people to succeed and get to this 50 year mark that you may want to take some notes. Like she, she is just a bundle of knowledge uh, and I love that she was willing um, to share some tips and how to how to succeed in this business because this mm-hmm. business is tough. And there are very, very, very few that have hit the 50 year mark. Um, so it's it's quite a feat to be yeah. to celebrate a 50th anniversary. We, we know the statistics on restaurants, new restaurants. Um, they, they fail way more than they succeed. Mm-hmm. Very rarely do they make it to your two let alone your <laughs> so, yeah. it, it, it's a big deal yeah absolutely well let's just jump in because I, yeah. I i just loved her conversation yeah let's get her on looking to grow your pizzeria or restaurant then you'll want to try the power of a cloud-based pos system with hunger rush you'll get everything you need this fully integrated restaurant management system allows you to easily streamline operations accelerate the delivery process and grow your business through hunger rush 360 marketing and it's so easy to use 
Want AI-powered text ordering? It's built in. Need to track orders? No problem. Schedule a personalized demo at HungerRush.com today. Performance Food Service is proud to deliver high-quality products, innovative technology, and custom operational solutions to restaurants of all sizes across the country. The flagship division of Performance Food Group, with deep roots in the restaurant industry, Performance Food Service has been the exclusive distributor of the Roma family of brands for more than 65 years. This signature relationship has allowed Performance Food Service to become a leader in the pizza and Italian segment of food service nationwide. With extraordinary pizza cheese comes extraordinary rewards. Only Baccio Exceptional Italian Pizza Cheese offers the Gold Club Rewards Program with a monthly cash back on every cheese purchase. Members also receive funds twice a year to use in their exclusive marketing store. It's their way of saying grazie to customers. Schedule a demonstration at BaccioCheese.com slash hot slice and discover how rewarding Baccio Exceptional Italian Pizza Cheese can be. Pizza is your legacy. Build it with Baccio. Sherry, good morning. How are you today? Good morning. I am wonderful. Thank you for having me on the show. Oh, happy Pizza Friday. <laughs> yeah, happy Friday. So yesterday was National Pizza Day. Did you do anything to celebrate that? Um, yes, yesterday we did. We offered to the customers a large pizza, two toppings for $10. Oh my goodness. Wow. That That's is a an insane deal in 2023. So how did that go over? How many did you sell? Well, I haven't looked at the paperwork yet. That's the whole thing. So, but um, sales were really good yesterday. We stayed busy. Um, about 2.30 yesterday, I was just begging for 15 minutes without an order. On the... <laughs> did you turn yeah. the phones off? Take the phones off the hook? No, we didn't do that, but, um, you know, I had orders to do yet for, yeah. to get our food product in. And I was like, I just need 15 minutes, but I yeah. didn't get it, but we were able to get through it. So, well, yeah. I hope that you take at least a couple minutes today to breathe because you are dealing with pizza Friday, uh, and then it's pizza Saturday and then Super Bowl Sunday, mm -hmm. and then Valentine's Tuesday. I know. So you've so got a lot of back, things happening so. back to back to back to back. <laughs> so. Are you doing anything for Super Bowl? Have you put out any promotions? Are you expecting a huge surge in business? How Super Bowl Sunday typically treat your pizzeria? Um, it's just a normal day for us. We, really? you know, we we live in a small community, so I mm -hmm. think a lot of people will have their own things. But yes, we do have a special for that day. Um, I believe it's two large pizzas with two toppings at each, a twenty-four piece cheese stick, a cinna oh, wow. stick, and a two liter for fifty dollars. So wow, that's a lot of food that they I'm can in. get for a good price. I wish I was in your area. That's I'm awesome. in Denise. <laughs> I wish so too. So Sherry, before we get too far into this, um, I just want to talk about your pizza business for a little bit. I want you to give us a little background and tell our listeners about your specific pizzeria. Um, but even before we get into that, Denise and I want to be the first to congratulate you. Yes. You've got, um, this is a big year for you. Your pizzeria is hitting a major milestone that very, wow. very, very few businesses ever get to. You're going to turn 50 years old. Yes. This, not you, your pizzeria is turning 50 years old. Yes. Huge, <laughs> huge milestone. Con con congratulations on that. A 50th yes. anniversary. Congrats. So, who started the business? Was uh, your parents, grandparents, a uh, long lost uncle? Uh, how did the business get going? <laughs> Well, our particular business, uh, there's a family story behind it that I think I'm going to have to give a little bit of insight. So mm -hmm. there were three brothers. So Grandpa Busilli was one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, three brothers, they lived down in the Detroit metro area. And in the 50s and 60s, they started three restaurants down there. They each had their own. Okay. So gr Grandpa had Alvito's. And in the early 70s, he sold, moved up here to northern Michigan. Okay. And he bought a grocery store up in Harrison, oh, wow. Michigan, which is just north of us. And in 1973, mom and dad, uh, Pat Busilli and Mary Busilli, um, dad didn't want to work in a factory anymore. Mm -hmm. And he had worked at the, the three locations, you know, they all made pizzas and stuff. So uh, they sold their house. They moved up here with $1,500 and they opened the restaurant here in Claire in 1973. 1973. Wow. That's amazing. Wow. <laughs> and, and they, um, 
when did you um, begin running the business? Uh, my husband and I officially bought it in 2008, but wow. um, Mark has been involved with the restaurant since they were little. I mean, they mm -hmm. would uh, make pizza boxes. They had to be at the restaurant because it was mom and dad, and the three yeah. little kids and their older brother. So mm -hmm. they were always at the restaurant. Um me, myself, and I, I, I say it's dumb luck that I got into this business <laughs> by marrying into the family, but um, it was in the 1990s. Um, Mary asked me to come and work here. Um, the first time she asked me, I said no. Second mm -hmm. time she asked me, I said, yep, I'm ready. And so she's really, uh, she took me under her wing and she taught me everything I know. And um, Mark and I bought the place in 2008 from her. Wow. What do you think is the the biggest thing that you learned from her? What is, what's that thing that you uh, that you look at in your business that you're like, oh man, I could not have have done this without learning this from her. She taught me how to make the best quality pizzas that we can do, and I have to thank her for that because without her knowledge or her insight, mm -hmm. um, we wouldn't be here where we are today. That's amazing. I love that. Can you describe your your pizza style? Um, what's your dough process like? Do you have a, a thick Detroit style, a thin, more of a, um, you know, kind of a Chicago thin? Is it a hand tossed? Uh, what kind of ovens do you use? Just tell us all the goods on your pizza. So we have a traditional style pizza. Um, it's a pan pizza. Um, back in the day, it used to be... Um, they used to have deck ovens back in the early 70s, mm -hmm. but we mm -hmm. no longer have those, so we have conveyors. Mm -hmm. So we've had to switch from using the cornmeal and stuff to going to a traditional pizza. Yeah. Um, our day starts off, the crew comes in, they start panning the dough that we made yesterday to get going, mm -hmm. you know, because we like to have it proofed. Mm -hmm. um, they pan the dough and then they start making batches of dough right away. So it's a process. It never really ends. Mm -hmm. um, you know, today is Friday, so we'll probably do anywhere between five to six um, batches, which are 50 pounds of flour each, um, mm -hmm. just to get through the day and part of tomorrow. And mm -hmm. we'll just prepare for that for the whole weekend. Oh, wow. So, so you, you, you use your dough the same day you make it typically. Is that, yes. is that what I'm going to hear you correctly? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yep. That's, amazing. That's awesome. Well, the one thing I've noticed is pan has really taken a resurgence around the country. Um, wow. When you went to the conveyor, did you have to um, kind of adjust your, uh, your dough to, mm -hmm. uh, to kind of allow for the different cooking styles between a deck and a conveyor? They did. They did. I wasn't here at the yeah, time. Yeah, you wasn't here for that. that. But, okay. <laughs> um, but yes, they did. Um, my mother-in-law, Mary, had been talking about that and stuff. And I'm like, what did, you know, what did you used to do? And my husband tells me like on a Friday night, he would be at a board with circles and he'd be rolling uh -huh. out the dough <laughs> yeah. and then uh -huh. hand it off to the person making the pizza. So, uh -huh. you know, putting the toppings on so that was his job when he was young yeah um, so yeah so d definitely a little bit different you know you have to be a little bit I mean when you're doing as you know much pizza as we are mm -hmm. you have to have a, a new system in place that can accommodate mm -hmm. everything when you're dealing with so many pans because you're stretching them out uh it, I don't know are they are, are you doing a rest in the, with the pans before they actually go in the oven? So you have yes. a huge stack of pans everywhere. I, was wanna, do. I want to vision this. <laughs> so we have um, 17 stacks and there's eight uh, pans in a stack. Oh, so wow. we've got quite a few of them. Um, I've considered buying a few more just to get us through sometimes on the summer days, but we can still keep up with the 17 stack. So we're pretty good at that. That's awesome. Now, when you That's and your husband, oh, sorry, when you and your husband took over the business, uh, did you put any of your own touches on the business or how, how did you kind of evolve with the, with the pizzeria? Um, not right away. I mean, because mm -hmm. you really don't mess with the good things. So. Don't mess with history. Um, I got you. 
there's there's been a lot of transitions. I'm going to say, you know, when I first started working for Mary, um, I, I'll recall one night, you know, here I am, a manager, a woman. Um, I had somebody who was a young male talk back to me and I was just sort of like, yeah, we're not doing this. So no. I said, you need to go home. And the next day he came back and he apologized. And I mm -hmm. said, if my husband would have been here, you would not have talked to him that way, correct? And he goes, you're right. And I said, so please give me the common courtesy too. So those things I've learned over the years, mm -hmm. how to handle those and stuff. But the little touches here, um, redecorating the re restaurant inside mm -hmm. and out. Um, there's been a few changes here and there. Um, so those are my touches that I do to it. Um, investing back into the restaurant. Uh, we bought new equipment over the last few years, trying to mm -hmm. upgrade things and make mm -hmm. things go a little bit smoother for the employees and myself yeah. um, and for the customers. So um, those are the things, you know, that you have to keep up on and yeah. keep improving. Yeah. yeah. That did, oh, like, sorry, okay. Jeremy, go ahead. No, it sounds like you had a, had a, a, there was sort of a sea change in 2008, but Prior to that, when your in-laws um, changed the oven style and, and had to change change the dough, and then you took over in 2008, so there's a sea change. And then, of course, in 2020, the COVID pandemic forced a sea change with you know restaurants all across the entire country. Um, how is your business different today than it was in let's say 20, 2019? How did it change? Mm -hmm. How did the pandemic change your business? How are you still? thriving and turning 50 years old at a time that, um, you know, you could have, could have been on life support potentially. We got busier. We did not did slow mm -hmm. down. Um, a lot of people I, did. Yeah. yeah. I, I did it at one point have to lay off some employees. We had to shut down our dining room so I couldn't have my mm -hmm. wait staff. Um, but I did try to use a couple of them when I could, you know, just to answer phones and stuff. Um, but no, we stayed busy. It was difficult as you're trying to get product in and there's no mm. product. And what are you doing? I mean, I took yeah. a lot of road trips across Michigan trying to just get our cheese um, so we wouldn't run out. I would I would make a, a round trip up to somewhere probably like two hours away, hit a couple stores, the Gordon stores on the way just to pick mm. up enough cheese to get through a weekend and stuff. So uh, the, the improvising, trying to strategize, are we gonna get this product in? Are we not gonna get this product in? It was difficult, um, but we managed to get through. So I'm, I'm, I'm really happy about that. <laughs> Absolutely. Now you had talked about um, kind of advancing your, your technology and buying equipment. Was any of that, um, any automation to help said uh, offset your your labor any labor issues you have do you uh, did you you know buy things that would help your labor um i always try and keep um our employees i i have them in my thoughts like mm -hmm. foremost because we have great employees yeah and i'm happy with them i you know for for the most part it's like they busted for me during the pandemic and they really got us through and the automation you know I made it a little bit easier I bought a new POS system we had an old uh rapid fire from the I, I'm gonna say 1990s yeah. um so we upgraded that uh, we got a new prism system so now we've got web ordering so they can get delivery or pick up on that um mm -hmm. so that helps a little bit that it keeps track of things for me a lot mm -hmm. easier too so i'm for I'm sure with that program <laughs> that's awesome yeah upgrading your pos is uh you know when you do it you're just like oh my gosh wow look at all these features that are available now <laughs> <laughs> yes yes it, it, it was a big help um still learning it you know rapid fire i could do in and out i could replace parts on the computer if i have to this is an all new ball game yeah. for me so um, you know, I'm still learning little pieces. I still have to get help, um, but it's still, it's a good system and I'm happy with it. 
Yeah. So let's talk about your employees. You know, you've been in business for 50 years and, uh, you know, and employees, I mean, you've had a lot of employees come through the shop, you know, what, uh, what is your philosophy towards your employees, you know, employee programs and kind of how do you approach uh, your employee culture? Um, it's, sometimes sort of like family, you know, they're, mm-hmm. they're great to have around sometimes, they, you know, it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, yeah. Um, you know, I, I want them all to be able to have a, a good paying job. I, you know, I want them to be happy with what they do. Um, but I tell everybody this, I said, um, I don't expect you to be here for life. I said, if you want to, that's great. But if you don't, I'm okay with it. And I'm happy for you to move on to your next Mm -hmm. step in life. Uh, I've had some people that have worked here a long time. And then I have a bunch of high schoolers that, you know, I know they won't be here. You know, Mm -hmm. next year I've got like four seniors, I think, that are leaving me. So, you know, I, they come and they, you know, they go, but it's a nice transition to have them to meet all these new people. Um, hopefully I give them a good work ethic by the time they leave here. Um, so that when they go to a next job, Mm -hmm. um, they can appreciate things that they took away from here and maybe apply it to their new, new, new jobs. That's awesome. That's I love awesome. That. Sherry, I, I believe what do you have four locations? Is that correct? Um, I don't personally. So they're all family owned, but mm-hmm. yes, there are four locations. So my sister in law owns the one in Farwell, um, Andrea mm-hmm. uh Daly, she owns that. Um, Uncle Lou owns the one in Houghton oh. Lake, and um a cousin, Janet Daly, owns one in West Branch. Oh, that's I love awesome. it. These small family-owned businesses in the Midwest. Mm-hmm. Now, now, also, Sherry, if I did my research correctly, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe you are one of the few pizzerias in America that are still offering a, a, a buffet, um, especially yes. post yeah post pandemic. Correct? Are you still offering that buffet? We do. We do have that. So, yep, it brings people in. They like it. Um, during the pandemic, considered getting rid of it, but. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. You know, people, especially when you only have a, you know, half an hour, 45 minutes for lunch, they like to be able to come in, boom, yeah. get their mm-hmm. food and be on their way. So um, it's it's nice to do that. It, it's a little bit different at night because when they come in, it's sort of like they sit down, they relax, they can take their time. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's it's nice to offer that to the yeah. customer. How do so you, you manage waste? I've yeah. always wondered with That's the buffets wondering. because waste can be really significant if you don't really understand now when you've been in business 50 years you you have a historical perspective and you can pretty well bank on you know how much you need on a tuesday night or whatnot Mm -hmm. um how do you avoid Um, throwing away a ton of food it's knowledge it's you know i i don't have it like a written down paper and how you do this but um we sort of have a system like when people walk in Okay, if six people walk in, we know how many pizzas to put in. We know how many cheese sticks to put in. Yeah, mm-hmm. there's going to be waste, but you got to have that variety of pizzas for the customers yeah. at the same time. So um, hopefully if we're doing our job good, there isn't a lot of waste, yeah. um, but there will always be with a buffet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you're doing it uh, for lunch and dinner, right? You're doing it uh, for all, for both service. Oh, that's awesome. (laughs) Yeah. We did Uh, a major industry survey that we completed just a couple of months ago. And one of the questions we ask is, do you offer a buffet? And I can tell you that you are one of the few that that are offering a buffet in the United States right now. So when, when I saw that, I was like, oh, I've got to ask her about this, especially again. And, And then many stopped offering them during, you know, pandemic. Um, and didn't bring them back. So yeah, it, again, you're in a small Midwestern town, and um, things uh, things are different in in these small Midwestern towns. Denise and I both grew up in small Indiana towns, so we, mm-hmm. even though I I don't know your specific town, I I feel like I do because it's probably a lot like Similar. the one I grew up in, yeah. just maybe a little bit colder in uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, through February. <laughs> yeah. It is. Yeah, no, the town the town has around three thousand people, give or take. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, so it's not huge, but the nice thing is I have three major highways coming 
into our town. So okay. people from downstate come through here. People from up north come down through here. Um, so it's a nice stopping point, you know, halfway sort of in Michigan because yeah. we're right in the middle. Um, yeah. So it's it's good. And, uh, uh, you know, it helps. Let's put it that way. The weather mm -hmm. also helps, too. So when we get snow, we get the snowmobilers, we get the skiers. Oh, um, fun. Yeah. So when it's not, it's sort of like, oh, like, yeah, I wish it would snow a little bit. <laughs> See, that's one thing, Denise. Maybe you've seen it in your travels. I have never seen anyone pull up to a pizzeria in a snowmobile. I've seen people pull up to a pizzeria in, in a boat. Um, I have seen people pull up in a boat. <laughs> in the Bay in Seattle. I've seen yeah. people, you know, obviously skateboards, rollerblades, you name it, the boardwalk in Venice Beach. Yeah. I've never seen a snowmobile pull up to a pizzeria. What I've would be really horse. awesome is if you had a drive through window and I could watch a snowmobile come through, <laughs> pick up the pizza and go home. That would be pretty rad. Yeah. Do you have this in um, photo or video that you yeah. can share? That's what we... <laughs> you know, no, we have we have had snowmobilers. We're we're not far from you know people there's a trail just a mm -hmm. little bit west to us and stuff, but but yeah, I mean not not too often does it happen, but occasionally it has. So That's so let's awesome. talk competition. You're in you're in a town of three thousand. How many other pizzerias are there in Claire? Um or you know, sometimes in a small town you may even have a a bakery that makes pizza or something like that. What's um what's the competitive landscape? Well, there, obviously you've been there for 50 years. I'm gonna just take a wild assumption that you're like the spot. You're the leader. Here. Yeah. But <laughs> well, we're I, I I brand it sort of as the hometown pizzeria. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I, I I think you know we've been here 50 years, so we sort of can you do it. that. But, <laughs> Out of your but town, right? there are three other pizza restaurants. Okay. Here in town, there are some restaurants that also serve, you know, pizza at their mm -hmm. places too. So um, I don't, you know, it, it used to bother me like, oh my gosh, what are the, you know, and um, my uncle gave me some good advice. He goes, don't worry about what they're doing. Just concentrate on what you're doing and mm -hmm. make it the well. Best you can. So I, I know they're here, but I don't, really pay attention to them mm -hmm. um to, to be honest so yeah. i just concentrate here at the restaurant what can we do to make things better if things aren't going good how do we improve this stuff or are we not doing what we should do so mm -hmm. those are the the things i have to look at um and not worry about the other people that are here in town well I said like my grandfather one time gave me the exact same yep. advice when i was really young i was an athlete and uh he taught me control what you can control, put your head down, work, become proficient, become the best you can be, work hard, and don't worry ever about what anyone else is doing. Just worry about you. And I have followed that advice. I'm 47 years old. I've followed that advice me my too. entire life with, with everything I do. A lot of people say you should watch, you know, watch the other person. Watch. I, I don't. I don't. Yeah. I, I, I do me. And, and, and if I do me well, I'm going to be okay. And it sounds like that you're you are operating by that same ethos. So that's pretty cool. Yes. Obviously it's worked for you all. It's working. <laughs> so, yes. Yes. so let's let's talk about your 50th because I mean, 50 years is huge. A, how are you going to market that? And what are you doing for your 50th? So we started right away, day one, um, uh, started a come in, fill out a name, throw it in a thing, we'll draw names. So the first week, I drew 10 names out of it. They came in and they were able to choose um, these little baggies that we have that are numbered and mm -hmm. whatever they got in it was, you know, so that was it. It could have been a $50 gift card. It could have been yeah. just some, you know, swag from the restaurant or yeah. uh, a coupon to the buffet, things like that. So we started that off with a bang each. Now we've got them where, uh, once a week, I'm drawing a name, they get to come in and they get to, you know, pull the same, you know, whatever mm -hmm. baggy numbers and stuff. And um, once those 10 are gone, we'll start it again. Um, I also did like a quick little uh, trivia question last week, I believe. And uh, whoever got the right answer, it had to do with the Godfather movie. They had a series of questions oh. they had to answer correctly. And they got free cannolis and they got free Musilee swag. So, oh, I love um, that. 
It was pretty cool. Next week is Valentine's Day. So I think on the 14th, I've got candies from the 70s that I'm um, going yes. to draw somebody's name, give it to. Um, so lots of different things. We're doing different um, specials throughout the, the year. Uh, my daughter, uh, Nina, she arranged them all. I think she's got all my specials set through December. So that's mm -hmm. awesome. Oh, wow. Um, and then in June, we're going to have, um, it's called a business after hours is what the town offers through mm -hmm. the chamber. We're going to have that. I'm going to close the restaurant down in the evening and people can come in and I'm going to have some pastas out. I'm going to have like a charcuterie board. I'm going to have pizzas. Um, mm -hmm. We're going to have some beer and some cider here um, just for people to, you know, sit down, talk, have a great time for a few hours in the evening. Oh, that's awesome. I when is it. the actual anniversary? Um, June. June. In June. Okay. June. okay. Yeah, you can't sell the 50th is such a big deal. It can't be one day. It can't be one week. It can't be one month. You've, you've got to celebrate this all you sounds like you're going to do it all year long, right? Yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah. I mean, we've done specials in the past, like a one day special in June, and it kicks our butt. And <laughs> I bet. you know, I've done like a large one topping pizza for three fifty, and um, oh, I don't that think original do pricing. That yeah, well, it's yeah. not original. It's not close. Actually, it's yeah. lower. So, yeah. um, but it's 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 a non-stop day and i'm just exhausted by the time and i'm not getting any younger so i don't know if i can do those anymore so do you know you're it. still very young i was you know oh, i was thanks. joking with you before we started recording because i hadn't I've never met you in person um we corresponded over email knew you were having a 50th anniversary so i'm like oh i can't wait to talk to this sweet 83 year old woman today <laughs> and then here, here comes a spring chicken on the screen i'm like you haven't owned a pizzeria for 50 years there's no way <laughs> so hey tell me do you still have by chance a menu from 1973 and if you do what were the prices like what was a um, pizza what was a plate of spaghetti oh, oh she does we go. Oh, look at comes prepared oh I do actually. Oh, but I don't know. It's from 1994. Um, I do have some pictures on the wall that's got some pricing on it. Um, I can't tell you offhand. Oh, of course, it doesn't have pictures on it or the pizzas on it. But like our silly sticks back in 1983, 1980s would have been like $1.50. Wow. So <laughs> if you wanted cheese on it, it was a dollar ninety five. Um so yeah. What are what are those prices today comparatively? More. More? <laughs> a lot more. Seven ninety nine, six ninety nine. Um a little bit higher. I think like a, a large cheese stick is uh thirteen dollars now. Oh yeah. Um, nice. But we do offer usually on on special each month so they mm -hmm. can get it for a little cheaper, but yeah, I think after 50 years, yeah, that's a good, you know, that's one area. That's, yeah. that's one thing that we have seen, like, as I travel the country, uh, when I go to the established older restaurants, a lot of them are not keeping up with the pricing. Like I was in Ohio and I went to these restaurants and I got like spaghetti and meatballs for $6.99 and it came with the spaghetti, the salad and the breadstick for $6.99 and I was like y'all yeah. that should be like $13 or $14 at yeah. least <laughs> so um, before the pandemic we really were at mm -hmm. those lower prices I think it pasta was like $7.99 $8.99 something like that um I took pasta off the menu for a while because mm -hmm. I couldn't keep up um yeah. you know when people call in you know I sometimes it would be me in the kitchen. I, I had to simplify things where mm -hmm. I could do things by myself. And so I'm like, something had to go. My daughter's like, you got to get rid of something because you're driving yourself crazy. Yeah. So we took pasta off the menu. Um, I actually just brought it back um, two months ago, maybe something like that. Mm -hmm. um, simplified it though. I only offer two now. There's only two sauces that we offer and it it makes the life easier there but prices have gone up accordingly too so yeah. um you know it it has to happen you know i i'm going to say pizzerias are probably they hate raising their prices yeah. yeah okay i mean it's like 
drawing your fingers down that chalkboard for me. It's like something you never want to do. Um, but at the same time, you have to, because I have a responsibility to my employees um, mm -hmm. to make, you know, an income that I can support them. So plus I have to pay my bills, all that stuff. So yeah. um, I have a responsibility to that. I also have a responsibility to the community. You know, there's a lot of times we donate back to the community. And if I can't, you know, if, if my prices don't reflect that, I can't help the community either. Yeah. So well, well said. said, you know, <laughs> there are high, a high end steakhouse, for example, only let's just say a 10 ounce filet, they may price at ounce, $65, $75. And they won't think twice to raise that $15 to $90, just like that. They, they, they won't think twice. They'll, they'll just do it. And the customers won't care. And then a pizzeria will agonize over going from twelve ninety nine to thirteen ninety nine. We'll just agonize over that. You're you are so right. And, you know, as an industry, we over years have conditioned the American consumer to think a pizza should be ten dollars or less, and it just yeah. can't. That can't be the case in twenty twenty three. So no, um, not anymore. Whatever. It can't. Um, no. So my philosophy is this: It's like um, you're going to pay for a great pizza. You know, we haven't ever chintzed on our toppings we don't cut back on our toppings it's the same amount we've always done same amount of cheese we've always done mm -hmm. we buy high quality products we don't buy mm -hmm. low end um, because I want a good tasting pizza I mm -hmm. want somebody to walk in that door and say dang that was awesome you know my my son who lives out in Salt Lake City now tells me I've ruined him for pizza for life because <laughs> I bet and yeah. buy pizza comparable to yeah. what he's had all his life. So um, I sort of chuckle, but it's like, <laughs> <laughs> um, but it makes me feel good. And yeah. I have other people tell me that too. I had a lady from Boston um, just text me like last week saying, what's your secret for your cheese sticks? Because nobody knows what a cheese stick is out here. And um, I had somebody else say, you know, I can't find a pizza at all where we're living and, you know, I'm, I'm missing Bucillies. I'm craving it. And yeah. so it's, it's nice to, um, to hear that from them. That's That's very awesome. nice. Denise, do you have any, uh, parting shots, any last questions before, you we know, I think to, to, to go out, like, let's just go out big and say, okay, you've been in business 50 years. What's next for you? grandbabies and retirement. Yeah. So I like it. Yes, yes. So my my youngest son and his wife are expecting in August. So mm, this will be our first grandbaby. And I'm super excited. And so it's a new chapter, you know, coming mm -hmm. up and um probably within the next eight years will hopefully be retirement for me. So we'll have to see. But um, you know, I I live in a great community. Um they've They've given back to me so many mm -hmm. ways. And, um, you know, we just try to do our best every day to um, get through and uh, make great pizzas here in Clear, Michigan. That's amazing. Awesome. Sherry, thank you so much for taking time this morning to sit down and chat with us about your business. Congratulations on the baby. Congratulations on yes. 50 years in business. This, wow, what a big year for you. It is. It is. So uh, excited. And uh, we're just looking forward to celebrating with, you know, with our, with our employees, with our mm -hmm. customers. And, you know, I, I just hope, you know, the rest of the year goes great. You know, I have great expectations for it and I'm sure. Yeah. It will. That's awesome. Well said. Well, take care and rest up after these crazy busy days. <laughs> Thank you so much. It was so nice meeting both of you and Likewise. have a great day. Have a great weekend. It's coming up. Likewise. Absolutely. Thank you so yes. much. Have a right. good day. Thank <laughs> you. Bye -bye.